Hey crafty friends, Anat Kessler here with Saturday I'm Extravaganza and today I'm creating an art journal page. I have just sewed my pages first, like always. And I'm just gonna put a few pages to protect the other pages of my art journal. They're just papers that I tore from a magazine. And what I'm gonna do now is put some stencils and um, spray spray the entire spread with some spray paints. So I'm going to use small stencils. I'm just go, going to arrange them. I want to use this one instead. The doily stencil. I'm going to use this one too. And I'm going to use different colors to spray. A little bit of orange, yellow, red, some green, blue, just all kinds of colors. And I'm just going to take the stencils that I sprayed with and press them against another spread. This is going to be a great way to start a new spread later. This is like starting a background and also I'm not wasting whatever sprays around the stencils. So I get two for one. Just drying it a little bit so it won't stick together and I just want to make sure everything is dry because we're going to layer some more colors and I don't want to get mud. So we need our first layer to be dry so we can go ahead and add more colors and more layers. So I'm keeping my spring, adding a little bit more color. And I'm not doing anything planned. I'm just spraying and I'm happy with whatever the result is. I'm going to add some acrylic paints now. Again, very colorful, bold colors. I want lots of colors here. So I have aqua and very bright orange and green and yellow. And even purple. Which I don't really like purple, but I don't know, I feel like using a purple here, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So, just taking a brush and adding the colors, the paints, here and there, again, with no particular plan or pattern. And another way to add, um, paints to your whatever project you're making other than a brush is to take a paper towel and just with circular motion just spread the paint around the page. Um, don't do it with a baby wipe because that will wipe away the paint. Do it with a paper towel. Of course lots of the paint is absorbed in the paper towel but some of it stays on the page as well and that gives you sort of a um, cloudy effect that you know the, all the colors blend together and it's not as sharp and vivid as you would with a brush so it gives you another effect with the acrylic paints that you can create so I think I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and you see I'm not even drawing the paint so they blend together giving us more shades of colors. So I think I'm happy with this and now I have to dry everything. 
So I cut here a face and two eyes and a mouth from a magazine. And what I'm going to do is glue the face to my art journal. Now I have, I'm not using the face as it is on purpose that's going to be part of the message that this page is going to have so that's why I'm changing the eyes and the mouth and basically the entire face completely because I want it to be like a puzzle of organs and have it not look very pretty or normal now I have here a black pen I'm using Posca pen they're very good uh, pens they can write on acrylic and the sprays and everything and not get you know ruined and what I'm going to do is draw her hair it's going to be a very big hair <laughs> and I'm just freehand whatever however the hair comes out will be fine with me remember I always say that our journaling is should be no judgment and no rules it's supposed to be a very free place to create a very uh, personal place to create so never be too hard on yourself it's always good whatever you create is good it's the creating that is important so I think see the big hair and what I'm gonna do now is take a white Posca pen this is this has a relatively large tip so I can color so it's not a pen it's more of a marker and I'm going to add white lines uh, on the inside the hairs now the thing is that you have to press on the tip of the pen so the white paint is going to come out and you might need to do two coats if you want it to look really white because as of now you can see that it's semi-transparent so you can see some of the color that is underneath it but you know you can go ahead and add another layer of white later and it also takes a little bit time to dry so what I think I should do is dry a little bit because my hand is smudging what I've done next time you should start from the top going down this way you will not trip over what you did with your hand but uh, I didn't do that so now I have to turn it but that's fine remember no judgment So I'm just going ahead with the painting. And some of the, it depends on the flow of the paint. Some of the white lines are fine, but some I will have to do again with another layer. On the left side, I'm drying everything because if you try to paint it, again when it's wet then you won't get the effect that you need it's just going to blend in together and instead of being one layer on top of the other so you see the second layer is making it really pretty and now all the lines of the hair are going to really pop and be really visible also very relaxing 
it's like coloring in the lines or something so it's really cool every now and then I need to press against the tip again to renew the flow of the paint sometimes and, and you have to shake it also there's a little ball inside that makes noise and blend the color and then the flow is better so I'm almost done with this painting just a little bit more on this side and then we'll be done now I'm going over some lines that were covered with the white pen again with the black pen and it's always good to make sure everything is dry now what I'm going to do is start adding details inside the hair so I'm starting with this stencil and a little sponge because I have a very specific area that I want to stencil just inside one of the areas of the hair in here and I'm gonna let that dry and in the meantime um, work on another area no that's dry enough so I'm just circling all the little circles with a black pen and adding a few more little circles and basically what I'm gonna do now is just decorate the hair with different shapes and different colors and different textures and I'm going to add a little bit of tiny yellow with a small brush just to sort of have a light effect on the little circles okay now I'm using a uh, big brush artist pens by Faber Castell which I really like because before they dry you can use your fingers to have that you know to rub them and smear them and it's really cool I really like that Of course, once they're dry, you can't do it anymore. But before they dry, they get you know they're completely dry. It's a really nice effect. You see, and you can blend together colors, and it's really cool. I really like that. Okay. So now I'm going to take a few pieces of old book page and just glue them in the hair. This one will be better. Just cut a few pieces. It doesn't have to cover every little inch, but most of it anyway. So I'm just cutting pieces that would fit. And um, just a few more pieces will be enough, I think. And then I'm going to add a little bit of gesso just to make sure everything combines together. Okay, that's enough. A little bit of gesso with a brush. Now everything is nice and cohesive. You can still see the letters and the 
old book page but it's more of a uniform look now for the next this one's supposed to be dry for the next hair I'm just going to color it I think the blue artist pen just using the full force of the blue here not using my finger but I want to make sure it's dry so I'm leaving it for a few seconds and using my heat tool to dry it and then I'm gonna add little white dots with my white pen not filling the entire surface just a wave of dots like this and in this hair in this space I'm just going to take a little a smaller tip and just write inside write stuff inside this is also um, this is by Sakura I love these pens they're really good micron pens they come in all different sizes of tips so you can choose whatever size you want this one was kind of small so I'm just going to create a mask to hide areas that I don't need because I want to stamp inside and I don't want the other areas to be stamped too. So I'm just taking a piece of paper, tracing it with a pencil and cutting it, cutting it with the scissors, taking a very small stamp, and just stamping on parts of the hair, creating, I think it's a chevron pattern. really cool pattern with brown in this way the paper protects the other parts I need to go over the outer lines again have to do this couple times while you work because some of the mediums and the paints might cover the black lines on the outside of the hair. I'm just taking that small uh, micron pen to go over the pattern in some areas and I'm also going to add a little bit of brown background with a big brush here just here and there to complete the pattern now the hair is starting to be really full and interesting with all those shapes and textures and things in it just adding a little bit more lines here and there it's all very subtle not very bold designs just little tiny details in the hair gonna paint that part there with a few shades of blue and that vibrant this is a sort of a yellowish green or greenish yellow or whatever now for the top part I'm drawing some hearts and I'm going to go with a black pen and draw around them like an outline which is going to be a little bit offset it's not going to be exactly around the shape so that's I like that effect and maybe even two lines and adding little black hearts to in the word love So basically you can come up with whatever 
pattern, shapes, colors you want to put in each part of the hair and just go ahead and do that. Don't need to follow exactly what I'm doing. This part is not glued properly so I'm just going to fix that with a little bit of glue and go right ahead and continue with my hair. Remember this? I love these stamps. By Seven Gypsies they're like from 10 years ago I think or something like that. Have those little phrases and words that you can change and stamp with still very handy and useful today even though it's very old it's fun to find things in your stash and then use them instead of buying new stuff all the time so small flowers green flowers the same as the hearts I'm going to draw around them with a black pen like have an outline for each flower again not very accurate and this is a point that I'm trying to make that you don't have to be accurate don't have to color in the lines you don't have to outline everything perfectly and perfection is not the issue here okay it's the fun of creating and it's the message that you want to say in your page in your spread because this is an art journal not a you know presentation or application for a job so there are no grades and no evaluations of any kind so I finished with the flowers and I'm just um, painting some lines here with a small brush just removing excess paint not even bothering to clean the brush it's such a small amount that I don't have to it's fine like this a little bit more orange and then we can go ahead for the next part of course make sure it's dry because then you can accidentally put your hand on it and smear everything now what I'm gonna do next just adding a few dots and what I'm gonna do next is use um, a 3d matte gel by Prima and some micro beads by Prima also this is a really cool way to add texture you mix the beads with a 3d gel and then you get a textured paste now the paste is going to dry clear it's going to be transparent so what you're gonna be left with is just the beads you're gonna show the beads the color of the beads and all that white paste is going to dry transparent so it's really really cool um, you can also um, just Another way of using it is just spreading it first the 3D matte gel and then sprinkle the beads on it. But the problem there is that you get all those beads all around you. You have to collect them later, put them in their jar and this is a more I think better way to use them because then you can don't get any beads around, you know and they're really really small so it's really hard to collect them all later have to work on a tray or something sometimes if you're doing a small tag it's fine but in an art journal it's kind of a hassle so what I'm doing is I'm using this way and I'm applying the mixture with my tool here with my spatula and basically sculpting it almost sculpting it as I want. Now because the matte gel is also water based it's going to mix with the color underneath so it's not going to be excuse me it's not going to be it's not going to dry transparent if you want it to dry completely transparent that you need to do it on a surface that has nothing on it 
like a paper or a canvas or something like that otherwise the gel um, gets blended with whatever is underneath it so I had some yellow and others you know sprays and it's going to dry probably yellowish but it's fine so I'm going to add the excess up there and a little bit down there and then at the end, it takes a little bit to time to dry but I think by the time we'll, we'll finish the, the spread you'll see how it looks it takes a long time to do it with your heat tool so I'm not gonna bother just gonna continue with my work so I'm going to add a few more little circles to where I had the circles before let that dry a little bit come back to it later in the meantime work on this part with a blue pen so I'm going to color this half circles again you can come up with all kinds of patterns and shapes and stuff to decorate the hair I want the hair to be so full of details and to show imagination and creativity it's going to be a contrast with the face that is very artificial and very fake so that's basically the point I'm going to take my pen and go around the yellow part here just have to clean the pen every now and then and I'm gonna use a gel a, a white gel pen to go around the black the blue parts <coughs> excuse me again <coughs> so this one's dry up there you can go ahead and use the black pen to circle it more so it's going to match the bottom part again a little bit of yellow color in the circles and what I'm going to add now just little white circles here and what I think she is missing while I'm working I'm thinking about it I think she's missing a bang right so I'm going to add bangs to complete her look it's gonna look really pretty another one on this side and I'm just going to color them with to paint them with acrylic paints blue and orange and a little bit of white with a white gel pen and I think the hair will be done I really like how it turned out she looks like Medusa, you know, from the Greek mythology. But she's not. Just adding a few more lines in my black pen. And I'm going to finish everything now with a little bit of white from the gel pen. white always seems to pop everything and make it really bright don't you think okay 
so I think I am done with the hair I think it turned out really really nice so I'm just taking some white gesso with my fingers to just have a frame around it and by the way you can see that the beads are dry and you can just see beads it's really cool not on the hair because that there's a thicker layer there but on the top and the bottom where, where I added that just gonna show you in a second after I finish with the gesso and it's really cool to go over the beads and because they it's like texture and they get a little white coat okay so I'm going to write with my um, black pen always be yourself and that's the message of this spread And I'm just going to freehand and whatever the letters, how the letters are, you know, turn out, it's fine with me. So always be yourself. And that's the, the point of this spread and that's the contrast between the face that is very artificial and sort of dictated by laws of you know society or whatever and the contrast between that and that hair which is full of personality and imagination and creativity and something that is completely free and unconventional and not um, governed or ruled by any rules whatsoever so that's the point so I'm just gonna go with a little bit of white as a contrast to the black immediately it pops you know it makes the letter very bold and pop out even more on that colorful background so it's good addition and I really like this page I think it turned out really how I envisioned it although sometimes I just start working and then the vision just progresses while I'm working so sometimes I only have a faint or an idea of what I want to do but not how I want to do it or how it's going to look in the end but this turned out really well I'm very happy so I hope that you like this page I really like it and I hope that you were inspired to create your own art journal spread let's see see the beads up close I like it the texture is amazing so I want to thank everyone for joining me and please visit my website www.anotkessler.com you get a lot of tips inspiration um, classes and information creative information that you can use and also if you like this video of course like give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it uh, until now and thank you very much for joining me um, I hope that you were inspired by this and thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you all next time have fun creating you guys mm -hmm.